show Kuti. <laughs> You're just cracking us up here. All right, let's go to the serious topic now. So, Right Group Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch have raised the alarm over the Protection from Internet Falsehood and Manipulation Bill 2019. They warned that the bill, um, the bill possible effect on public discourse in a country with an estimated 113 million internet users and 30 million of whom are active on social media. Sheon Bakari, Programs Manager of the Amnesty um, Nigeria branch, said in, on December the 4th that social media is one of the last remaining places where Nigerians can express their opinions freely. He is the youngest son of the Afrobeat legend, Bella Anikula Pokuti. He calls himself the black sheep. Yeah, and, and a few days ago, he posted that he has offered himself to make a case for youths that are trapped in Nigeria. I saw it on your Instagram page. Yeah. So we start from there. Thank you so much, Sheon Kuti, for joining us. Thanks for having me <laughs> on the show. Now, when, because you've been active on, on online, you know, concerning the gagging, everybody trying to close our mouth. Just tell us what I'm active feel. on ground too, you know, but <laughs> it's just that. I'm not seeing that one because, yeah. yeah. because, you know. Uh, but media, people don't, social media people don't rush to the important to where defense, the action is happening. You, you know? should call us. Now you have our contact. We'll come and meet you. Yeah, but also the things that we do is not for publicity sake. It's to at least try and organize communities and get that people is ready. What we represent so tell us well. what, so what when you when you and you you've seen the social media proposed social media bill yeah. when you when it when you saw it what what was your first reaction to that? Well. <laughs> Aldo Makori, I don't know if you know him, the chocolate mm -hmm. city yes, boss. Yes, you know. I know him. There was already a cy cyber crime act bill that was a bit uh, draconian for any kind of against free speech, basically. Right, yeah. That was passed in 2014. Yeah. That was used against him. Yes. You know, yeah. so, I mean, and Nigerians were kind of quiet, you know, and so that's the thing, and that's the real reason why I'm so vocal about Shogore. It's not really because I was a big supporter of his revolution now movement. But because that's how tyr tyranny always is. That's how tyrants behave. That's how every op uh, oppression that has happened in this world begins, you know. You go with somebody that everybody's on the fence about and you're abusing, you know, and people mm. allow it, you know. And then you try, you know, so that's, if you look, you know, it was first Dasuki. Yeah. Everybody's like, okay, well, it's Dasuki. Mm -hmm. It was NSC chairman, he's yeah. an oppressor. We give it's good for him, too. you know, and then next person, El Zakazi, and we're like, oh, because he's a Shia, why did they block road save? Mm -hmm. He's all this Muslim, they all this, uh, now he has done it to a journalist, you know, and if we continue to keep quiet, they will continue to tighten the news until, you know. So what do you think is, is the best way for us to fight this thing, you know? I as, think as it, the youth in Nigeria, because it is us that is being targeted, because no, no, no. we are the largest population <laughs> online, Absolutely. and we are the ones actually making noise online. But this is the problem, you know. People always see the youths. The youths have no money, they hmm. don't work, they have no power. So I don't know why Nigerians always say the youths are the expect the youths to change things in this country. The only thing the youths are in Nigeria is the truth. The youths are a reflection of society. If you want to see how well your society is progressing or how decadent your society is, you look at your youths. Because youth only emulate leaders and elders. True. You know? If I may step in there. Yeah. During the period of, um, what's it called, um, a racism in uh, the US. There's um, still racism in the US. During the key, the key time it, we had it that nobody, you can't get on the bus, you can't do anything with that because you are black. When well, I can't get a cab. <laughs> <laughs> during the period in the 70s, actually, when this was a top notch in the US, the um, well, people like uh, Mandela, people like um, Apartheid, Martin, uh, Martin, Martin, Luther, Martin King. Luther King, people like Malcolm X, they all came up and they all spoke up. So what do you think? Do you think we have that set of crop of youths today but to actually express youths, themselves? See, Malcolm X was an imam, was a mm. religious leader. leader. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin Luther King Martin was, was a But how yeah. old was he? He wasn't in, yep. his, he was, he wasn't in his 40s, he wasn't even in, in his 30s. He, when was, he, no, he was in his 30s. Um, because yeah. Malcolm X, for example, I, but he was a youth. But this is a professional. The truth is, when we say mm. youth, right. we, we, mm, 
The youth are people that are still growing up in their 20s, discovering life. We expect them to stop enjoying in the nightclub mm -hmm. and go and pick up philosophical books to come and save their yeah, country. According to Nigerian constitution, they are between. But, but you know, so what but the you truth do, is, yeah. it is we have to differentiate between young people growing up and okay. the professionals that have Young influence yeah. in society. Okay. Okay. So the real people letting Nigeria down are the young professionals. professionals. Okay. Those of us that still have um, age on our side, that still have energy on our side, mm -hmm. and we have resources, resources, influence, but we use it to side with the oppressor. You see, so that is the issue. It is not about young people, youth. I feel it is we, the professionals, that continue to betray the rest of let me, let me uh, the people. When you say we use it to side with the oppressors, how, how so? I, I wouldn't necessarily say I side the oppressor. Maybe I Well, no, no. As... For me, you know, <laughs> for example, <laughs> there's always the point that I say, oh, there's one good guy in government office. Yeah, but the government is bad, so, you know, you, you the one good guy, you Only know, the one cockroach it. in the stomach of the chicken. You're only digesting, you know, you're not doing anything. There's nothing you, happening. You are just a cockroach in the stomach of the chicken, you know, so... So when you're mentioning things like... Well, let me just... Yeah, like, okay. So for me, for example, can Nigeria's money be laundered without Nigerian bank and bankers' complicity? No. Hmm. You know, when military men are sent into neighborhoods to abuse people, and are they not? Quiet. Yeah, so they are young professionals because they are wearing uniform. They decide to do the wrong thing because somebody said so. So as soon as we've been able to secure our own comforts within oppression, we can pay for our own water, pay for our own gen, send our children to private school, like travel sometimes. As long as I can sort of education, <laughs> then it doesn't matter. No, I think there's a nuance to what she's saying as well, that, you know, whatever it is, you can't let anybody stop you from succeeding. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is what she's saying. Yeah. We agree. But, we, but we are saying that, is that the right thing to do? No, no, no. The, the, I think the right action to, for us as well is that instead of using those energies to bail out our oppressor, because that's what we do, you know, everybody becomes a government, the most successful person in the family becomes a government to the family, the the family. you take care of their health, you, like me, for yeah. example, I don't give people charity, you know, the only charity I, use, I have, I use it for my movement to see how we can better Nigeria, that's the only charity I have to give. If I'm going on the road, if you like, let your two hands be broken upside down and your leg be upside down off your head. Yeah, and I think no, but I think I no, I share. Let me tell you, I share that. That the truth is, I that belief with you as well. We, as the professionals, I say that have this money. We know that we are the ones spoiling Nigeria. We know we are the ones doing the job. So we are in our cars. It when, when, yeah, when we are complicit. So we are in our cars. We see somebody suffering. We want to give you 500 naira so that we can feel good. I think that will solve the problem. So we can feel good about ourselves and go home and sleep well at night. You know, all those kind of games we play. You know. Me, I'm not ready for that, you know, because I know if those people didn't really have, if they really didn't really have, and nobody is handing them out money through the car, they will look for paternalizing them, you know, because paternal, you know, the paternalistic nature of our society is quite hierarchical. We give to the person in the car, our guy give us in the office, his own guy give him where he is, yeah, that one's a guy gives him, that, that's it's how just, success just, is made in yeah, Nigeria. Yeah, it's just in different you know? levels. <laughs> The envelope is somebody different. Else, what somebody is collecting Ghana money uh, for? Somebody else is collecting. Last, last. Somebody, One. Even our president yeah. is collecting his own. <laughs> I mean, former attorney general is now. Did they say former attorney general is in EFCC custody for yes, bribe? Yes, he is. $1.3 billion. Uh, so woo. there's from five naira. <laughs> $1.8. Somebody is the FCC now trying to answer case. Shame, okay, now, wow. I'm happy that you're talking about young professionals because there's a strong accusation right now that is going on, especially because you are in the music industry. Music, we understand, is one of the biggest tools that we can use to shape, you know, and probably even create this change that we're talking about, you know, from songs. And, I mean, your, your father w w did amazing till today his music is still relevant to what is even happening today Absolutely. your music as well so but i don't see that happening amongst your fellow artists you know everybody right now what they are more concerned about nobody is bringing songs that would help us think about what we need to start to do in nigeria instead everybody's thinking Create of personal you know personal consciousness of i want to blow i want to become a billionaire i want to be this i want to be that and it's now it has eaten deep into all of us and we don't even know how we can come out of that because i believe that if we truly want to fight these things we must first think nation first before we now think of personal you know, but a lot of us right now, we are conditioned to start to think Personal. myself, my family, my this, my that. Can I say you something? Know? If the nation has failed you so much, you, there's nothing wrong with you thinking yourself. No. <laughs> Maybe he should respond to that. 
Well, you know, <laughs> first of all, we have to understand that the relationship between the media, the artist, and the public is not the same as it was during the days of my father. Absolutely. Media was a bit free in the 60s and 70s, so people could express themselves, you know, just the way social media is. See, this is the beginning of social media. So there's no way the elite will not find ways to regulate it. So all over the world, I mean, not only Nigeria, of that course, yes. there's a law trying to criminalize yeah. certain things, on, even in America. Yes. In there's India. Germany, there's India. Yeah, there's... Everywhere in the world, yes. the elites are trying their best to see how they can regulate and use it more to their own benefit. As it than to, to suppress and oppress. Yes. And me, for example, I'm done with the internet or social media. You know, like, I don't really see it has done its best. There's nothing more you can add to society. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have the entire intelligence of the world at our fingertips, and people are getting more stupid every day. Oh. <laughs> Very poignant. You know, so I mean, the internet has done its best. You know, it's done what it's going to do. Can you repeat that again? <laughs> <laughs> that was so <laughs> deep. Very poignant. That that was no, it's so, true. I mean, I, said so the, I mean, everybody has the whole intelligence of the world in their hand. Yes. You know, and we are getting more stupid every day. Don't you think that that is as a result of what we have been exposed exactly. to? Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. You. So it is not about what the musicians mm. decide to put out. It is what the owners of media decide to. Okay. Forget well, yeah. Nigeria. Let's look at America, right? America is a free country, yeah. right? Suppose they do. There are songs on the radio every minute in America about killing black people. Mm -hmm. Kill a nigger, mm -hmm. shoot a nigger, slap a nigger, or any kind mm -hmm. of abusive. And that's but what is happening. In that same America, you cannot put out a song about shooting dogs. You can't say in your song, oh, I shoot dogs, I go around they'll my neighborhood. They'll come at you. And then all the Not that they'll come at you. They will, they will, they will arrest you, yeah. <laughs> You in, fact, it, in fact, they can't even play that kind of so song. So there are certain powers in every society that decide the kind of what? music that that society must dance to. The kind of consciousness, because in, in Nigeria, and that's all over the world, but let's talk about Nigeria, you know, that's what the elites do. The elites have to, it's part of what mystifies them. They have to make themselves the example of society. That's why if you hear these songs, they name names, talking about how they want to be like this person, yeah. they want to be like that person, talking about how this person is the best at doing this. So everybody is in that consciousness, you know, even if it is to your own detriment. detriment. You know, you believe because, you know, there's also a herd mentality, you know, that and, is... And, and before you know it, even if you did not even agree to that, it grows on you. No, I mean, yeah, there were some songs it's constant. That, to your it's yeah, constant. Yeah, yeah, there were some songs that were very, very to me, but now it has grown on me. It takes a lot, it takes a lot to tune out. You yeah. know? I tell people, like, everybody wants to see the world change, but for the world to change, you it's have to make personal changes. You. And making yeah. personal changes are quite difficult. You know, it took me a lot to also tune out. You know, and to just see things that used to interest me, I'd be like, man, be there, do that. I don't really need to. I want to have, it's, a, it's an effort, you know, and. So she will tell us, because <laughs> this, where we are right now, do you understand? We understand that there's this, there's a scheme. People are actually pushing towards, you know, making sure that this freedom that we are experiencing it's as young people, people, that we can just say what it is that we have, people want to, they want to, I mean, stifle this freedom. Okay. Um, one of us on sat on Friday, Lamy, she is actually of the opinion that social media should be regulated. Because as far as she's concerned, especially when you do all the cyberbully and all of those things, and when people come at you, you know, and people are now falling into deep sense of depression because of certain things. And, as, and, and I'm sure that's, that's why Instagram... But if it's not, people like that should be told that if it's not social media, it should be something else. Yes. Because when people are depressed by bullying... If you take or away people's prosperity social, that they are supposedly showing on social media, yeah. yeah. E even if you don't see it, before, people have been depressed about that even before there was before social, media. Yeah. social media. It is the kind of consciousness that we also have in our society. As I said, our elites want the kind of consciousness where we believe that the only expression of wealth is luxury. You know, Thank and you so people much. are also judged by the amount of, I have to say, self destructive things that they can get away with. I don't know why there's a certain, not only in Nigeria, in all colonized countries, you know, the more you can show how anti-African or anti-black that you are being in a certain way, you the know, more you're the more you are celebrated, the more you are put on billboards, the more, you know, you are made the example, 
you know. So I think this is more nefarious or insidious than we just want to blame some artists that just came from the ghetto, a little boy, that they put a hundred million naira in his face, you know, for saying some, you know, and you expect his, the next boy in the ghetto not to do the same. So it's what we, the same. So, and we, the people, need to also realize we're not the ones giving them this money. You understand? They are sold to us like goods, like, you know, advertisement. I mean, the same reason why we all buy the goods we buy. Yep. So artists are packaged to us that way. Wow. You know, this is no longer the time of the fellas and the Sonia days that come with something to give you. Or no. the Sonia Kosums. For example, and I don't want Nigerians because, you know, there's also this negative stereotype of how we are the ones doing it bad. Mm -mm. I don't think anybody on CNN can say what Ted Turner doesn't want neither. Absolutely. You understand? Nobody on Fox can say what the Koch brothers don't want to hear. Sure. You know, so this is a global game that we are just at the bottom of, the bottom of the totem pole because as former colonial states, neo-colonial states in a way, we are not allowed to determine, to self-determine. We have to determine so according to... how do we as youth we now rise <laughs> above the social bill that has been given to us? Well, the social media bill, I think, is already dead. I don't... Think, it has yeah, I think, it's moving on. No, but the thing, the thing about it is that, you know, still, I'm happy the way Nigerians, like, kind of... They came out together. Came about 85,000 of um, them went petition. online to yeah. sign, the, sign the petition, but it has still moved to the second reading. Yeah, no, but that's where it was. No, that's where it was, we found yeah. out. Yeah. But if, it, if, if, it is, if this is this, the case as it is right now, do, does it not tell you that, I mean, from what you're saying about the elite trying to make sure that this they feel this propaganda, do you think that they would stop it, even with that 85,000 people I, signing I, I feel like I feel like... We pay one of the most expensive prices in the world for internet, for some of the slowest internet services in the world. The poorest, yeah. You know, so, I mean, that alone is some certain kind of violence against us. So what we don't understand is what violence is. So as soon as Nigerians begin to see what violence really is, because we need to understand that violence is when you go and slap somebody, or that, so that people can commit constant violence against us on a massive scale, and we do not pay attention, pay to, attention it. to it. You understand? So I think once we begin to actually see what violence is, we and we realize that the fact that you know we are spending almost 20% of our salaries just to get to work, you know, we don't even talk about rent and feeding our families, and our children can go to schools. I mean, I tell Nigerian professionals that we sit down, and we've never dropped our to down tools before because there are no good schools for the poor. Yes. Because there are no good hospitals for the poor. We don't show solidarity to the Nigerian people. And that is what really protects the Nigerian business why, and political elites. Why do you think that's the case? Why won't people down to... Oh, because we've been to their school. I mean, that is the greatest... Because we go to school, and in our schools, especially in Africa, the government removes with the, you know, the elites. They're the ones that create the education. So the education is basically to remove your historical consciousness. I mean, your history... No, no, let me not put it that way. That's the wrong way. They remove, they remove your consciousness of being a historical being. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. if you study Paulo Ferre, because that's one of the things Paulo Ferre kind of makes clear to us that we as human beings have come here to be historical. Exactly. So they send us to their school and take away that consciousness and replace it with their own consciousness. Yeah. Now, let me, let me, let me So we all, have, we all house the oppressor there, inside. There Everybody is, will make it. There is this, um, <laughs> I met Kulishore um, Shorinyo. He says that before you become a, a, a leader in, a, in an environment or an organization or in a country, you have to start from the bottom. You have to start mm -hmm. from foundation. Now. Do we have such crops of youth in Nigeria today that we say, okay, apart from those in the north, do we have youths that are, that are grounded enough to say, okay, I want to lead Nigeria to the next level? Let me level. We'll start with him. Would you be willing to take up maybe um, a leadership role in Nigeria, for instance, as a young person? Because we know that well, if you decide to say you want to go, because the way we can solve this problem, the, the, you say that we can't really solve it online. We can't solve it online. We yeah. have to do the groundwork. Yeah. Mm. So what, what kind of groundwork, apart from going into politics or something? Yeah, because what, what kind of politics? So that's what I'm saying. Like, so your point about being a leader as well. Yes. So what does it mean to be a leader? Do you go and tell the people, I'm your leader? Or you go and tell them, well, we have a problem that we must solve. And while people are working together to solve that problem, they say, wow, you are the most efficient at this, that 
you have allowed all of us to act out of our own will, not be a part of your. Because this is what I tell people: like yeah. you, didn't you are online, in any every, everybody's online saying yeah. that they are political, arguing about Buhari and Atiku. I said you have still not acted. So you haven't done anything. Buhari and Atiku are the actors. You only have an illusion of action. You know, and they never are... insulted each other on social media. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need to insult each other because they are sharing money. Mm. Mm. Never insulted Nigeria each is a other rich country, you know, it's so money. rich that you know our elites can feign civil that they are civil, you know, because they can export their violence into our communities. Mm. You understand? That is why that is why Nigeria elites act like they are civilized. You know, they don't have to fight, they make their points by sending, you know, one group of members into the other, you know, they have the money. And, the, and, and they, they have not, the not only do it, well. yeah, they can get away with it, you know. So that's why throughout election, you can be hearing that headsmen are killing people, and suddenly the election is over, and all the headsmen just find it's peace in their heart, and I'll suddenly stop. there's there's grass for their cow to there's eat, the there's no again. problem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so in but have they not kept us in this state of mind? Because yeah, so what you were, where you were going with that conversation is that they are the actors in this game, and they are using us as pawns, you know, to play the game. So if they want us to start to fight each other and make noise and whatever, why they keep doing whatever it is that exactly. they're doing, they have the resources to do that. So how do we now break out of this? So we, as the, um, as young professionals in Nigeria, I believe that we have to do the sacrifice of not only on learning many of the things, you know, that we've been taught, that we think is true. You know, we have to unlearn many of those things and relearn what it means to be, you know, uh, a part of our people. Learn the information that we need to. And what kind of information are those? Well, I mean, on economics, on uh, social engineering. Well, because Chair, many of us don't know that our politicians go to America to employ racist social engineers uh, wow. that create uh, segregation in America that make sure that the white people stay above the black people to come and implement those same That's strategies. Listen, the more doctors we create out of Nigerian universities, the worse our health care. Mm -hmm. The more lawyers, the more injustice. The more police, wow. the less security. Do you think that these things are just like really nearly they just happen so because it's, there's a deliberate it is a deliberate thing, act. Which is why they continue, <laughs> the, the amounts um, allocated to education remains so what are it is. So are we and 74, 74 percent, no, no, no. Nigeria is ruled by those that were willing to kill black people on behalf of white people. You have to understand that that is what the Nigerian military is. We need to remove all these Things that we watch on TV or oh, support your troops, uh, respect the army. Or the, for what? For, as a black person, for what? The Nigerian military was West African Frontier Force. Came to Africa, they were the black people that were willing to work with white people to kill other black people. Wow. That is the consciousness that rules them. And it remains. And that is what remains. That's why an army man will beat you to a pop on the streets if you just look him in the eye because of a uniform that, you know, some white man came to give them. 150 power, years yeah. ago. You understand? Yeah. So that's why police will say, why are you talking to me like that? Even though he's your employee as a citizen of the country. That's why none of your politicians can call you citizens. They'll but be using the word masses. Who, who so, is a mass? You're also enlightened <laughs> and you know well educated in this subject. But the sad fear that I have right now is that a lot of us, and I'll put myself too, we are not informed. We don't have this information, we don't have this education to understand this dynamics that you're telling of the power play. Neither did so I. Wait. I had to study this. So tell me, because we are here, we actually want our young people. Because 2023 is coming. They will still come again and they'll bring the same things yes, to the fall. And we'll definitely. still fall victims. How can we start to study? Where are the things? What are the things we should look out for? Because I think even our educational system, they're not making it easy because they truly want to keep us at that level. How that do level. we put this sort of information out there to awaken the consciousness my, my own organization, of the youth? My own organization is called the Niger Resistance Movement, okay. NRM. Mm -hmm. We have our website, nigerresistance.org, and there are many other young vibrant socialist leftist organizations out there there are also many other political parties out there like the socialist party of nigeria you know spn uh well they're the only ones i still really trust for now i used to believe in uh not really believe in but work with among your former party but i always knew they were going to do what they did you know but for now you know so there are many young people trying but that's what i'm saying you know um because we are going against the current. Hmm. You They're understand? not giving the voice to speak up. So and many young people do not understand that that is what is necessary. Hmm. 
They think wearing Gucci across their chest is what is necessary. Huh. No, you have to no, under don't go there. no, you have to understand that people in their thirties in Nigeria, in their forties, in their fifties, still have the same ambitions that they had in their twenties. It's for a reason. It's for a reason that somebody still has the same dreams that he had in high school. I want to buy a car. Mm -hmm. I want to be driving the best car, so living sad. in the best house. Because they've not yeah. been given the opportunity the to actually, exactly. actually open up um, their minds and reach because that goal. When you look at Nigeria, really, I always say to people, like, if you look at Nigeria and you look at what we call success, success here is just another word for extraction. Who is the best extractor? Who has been able to take something that was given to all of us by nature and monetize it for his own benefit in our name? Wow. Why tell you, I'm doing it for you, mm. but only your life is better. You know, and everybody is just saying, yes, that's how it should be. Yes, yes. Everybody just saying, nobody is willing to question, you know. So that is, the, that is the main issue. If you look at someone like Bill Gates, you know, <coughs> yes, even though the internet was not invented by him, you can see how he modified it and brought value to his country to be where he is. The iPhone is in my pocket, so I understand what Steve Jobs had done. So when you see all these, they are our own so-called industrial giants. You can actually see value. When I see my own industrial giant, I just see extraction. Somebody that can sit down, dip his hand in both public and private and wealth. And get a lot of favors from the government. Then when the team blow up, they'll create Amcon to say, well, mm -hmm. we have to help them buy the debt oh. and take it. You know, so, so soft landing. So oh in, <laughs> in, a, in another is, context, there is a level of manipulation from the so-called... Yes, of course. I mean, we are the ones not enjoying... I always say, like, we the people are the ones that they are telling that we have to be capitalists. The elites of Nigeria don't do capitalism. Sky Bank just collected 200 billion, and they still closed down last year. They took 200 billion in 2017. They changed their name. And they, they closed close down. Uh, I mean, then they closed down in 2018. 200 billion naira. The government said they were giving them the 200 billion to protect the depositors' money. The funds, yeah. This 200 mil billion came from taxpayer. Who is the taxpayer? Who is you the depositor? Same person. No, who is mm. the taxpayer? And who is the depositor? It's, it's the around, same person. We can't, we can't. But, you know, they are so highly socialized. They can do anything, they'll be handed out. Hmm. But you, if your own small business, when you're actually doing work, trying to bring value to your community, you know, trying to give them services, you don't make it. They'll say, ah, close down, you're yeah, wing busy, dead door, this, wow. that. In fact, we really cannot, in fact, we no, cannot so, exhaust, so, we no, cannot so, exhaust. So we, it, yes. we as young professionals in Nigeria have to decide what side we want to be on. Yeah. That is just the, we awesome. have to really, because people continue and to make excuses. And when we now make that decision, we now need to now stick to the to plan yes. and start to do the groundwork. Yes, it's the information that helps. So, so, thank you so much. <laughs> we really don't even have time for summation. <laughs> okay. Because we need to do a bit of our Christmas special, but Ooh. we really do, we want to. Oh, I didn't want to, you to go, Sha. But sure. up next, <laughs> we'll discuss maybe, maybe you give me a job. Way. Are we not? Way. One of us. Up next, I'm we'll discuss the way, way to share I'm in seeing. this Christmas season. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you.